problem is difficult to finish in five minutes. But if we are looking at a history graph of a traveling wave pulse at a certain position, what we are looking at in graph one is at negative six meters, what's happening to that wave at each time. And so the first thing we are going to do when trying to convert a history graph to a snapshot graph is let's make a list of those points on that line that are important to us. And since we really don't need to worry about any of the negative values, they're all at a displacement of zero, we're just going to record that. So this graph is showing us where the, the, thing, the wave is from equilibrium at various times. And I wrote those times down. The next thing we need to do is make a snapshot graph, which requires us to figure out Instead of looking at when and displacement, we're looking at where and displacement. And this wasn't really well explained in anything. So first thing I'm going to do is now that I have all those down, I'm going to calculate the time interval that each point on this line has it to get to eight seconds. So we're literally just going to take our reference time of eight seconds minus each time point. So for the first it has eight seconds to move, eight minus zero, next, eight minus two, then so forth. All right. So because of this, we actually get a negative time interval, right? The time, the position at 10 seconds actually has happened in the past. So the next thing we want to do is calculate the difficult part. We need to calculate where these points are now. And let's call those x. We just want to figure out where the x value is. And so I'm going to give a formula for that. We are going to take the initial position plus the velocity times the time interval. And that is literally just a constant velocity problem. Um, but we now have a formula for it. And we know that our initial position was our reference position of x equals negative 6. Our velocity is in the problem given as 2 meters per second. And so this is going to give us our new value for x. And so lastly, we're going to put our x d coordinate. All right. So for our first, if we calculate um, this at x equals um, negative 6 plus zero, um, plus two times eight, negative six plus zero time, oops, sorry, negative six. I'm going to write it down because trying to say it out loud is making my brain hurt. All right, there we go. So that's 10, right? So our new position is 10 and zero. So our next one, negative six plus two times six. So 12 um, plus negative 6, that is 6, and that is still at 0. Um, our next point, we are now at um, starting at negative 6 plus 2. Remember, 2 is our velocity times 4. So we get 8 plus um, negative 6, so that is 2 and 1. Remember that d value is just from our original graph. Let's continue. Negative 6 plus 2 times 2. So now we are at negative 2 seconds and a position of 1, or negative 2 meters, sorry. Next one, we could actually read this straight off of our graph because right on our graph, x, um, we don't have any time interval to worry about. So that is just going to be um, time x is, what did we say, negative 6 and um, one half. And you could put that in here, negative six plus two times zero. There we go. And the last one is the one that goes back in time, negative six plus two times negative two. So that would be negative 10 and zero. So those are all of our coordinate points. We have 30 seconds, I can do this. So let's plop those on our graph. Um, at 10 and 0, we're here. At 6, we are at 0 still. At 2, we are at 1. At negative 2, we are at 1. At negative 6, we are at 1 half. And at negative 10, we are at 0. And so I will connect my lines. 
like that. So it is a lot. Thank you.